Hello guys and welcome to a new Warno video today by me Vulcan. In this one I have for you an overview of the Berlin Command Division, a new division available in the Udino update. Please remember that this is early access so what you see may be subject to change. I'm going to be going through all of the units available and then we'll be putting together a quick deck. I do bear in mind that there has been changes to all the traits so I'll briefly go over those as we head through as well. So here in the logistics we have the M35 supply which is 500 supply for 20 points, same with the TRM 2000 logistics truck. And we have the Bedford MJ supply available which gives you 1000 supply and then you have your command options. So the Humvee, the M577 CPC, the P4PC, VAB PC and Rover CP. Bear in mind that in Warno now you don't need to leave a command in the sector in order to capture it unless you are contesting the sector. So when you're back capping things, having like a nice fast jeep to run around and capture your back sectors early on is a good thing. So look for the fastest one, which in this case I believe is the P4 PC, uh, which you can get the most of. In the infantry tab, there is quite a lot to look through here, but we first of all have three units of military police. We have the Prevoté, which are the four-man French military police which come with the MAT-49 and the military police buff grants a suppression regeneration bonus and removes any unsteady traits of nearby units so some of the infantry can have unsteady traits and that will remove it. Then we have the military police for the US which is a five-man squad for 15 points and then we have the four-man squad of the British and Probably the worst, unfortunately. <laughs> then we have the gun group. These are just a standard infantry squad. Two L85s, two L7A2s. Then we have the AANF1, which is the French machine gun. Has 1,200 meter range with the accuracy of 35%. You can bring it in with the VAB if you want to kind of double up on the machine guns. This has a 50 cal on it, which is quite nice. Then we have the engineer leader. So engineer's leader going to be 110 points, five-man squad with the shock trait. So it does inflict more suppression when fighting at close combat ranges. And it has the leader trait, which of course increases the veterancy of all units around it by one. Uh, and this can also, of course, be used to capture sectors. Uh, so technically what you could do is unload it in a sector, capture the sector, load it back up into its Humvee and then continue forwards to the front line if you wanted to. And we have the engineers, these have the shock trait, uh, they have the flash launcher which fires four rounds and then reloads and then fires another four. It's a pretty effective close range infantry weapon but it will need supply to get it effective over time because you will use up the ammo very quickly. Then we have the engineers which have the dragon, this is just the normal dragon not the dragon 2, so 14 penetration at 1575 meter range. These engineers also have the shock trait. The M60 is available, it can come in the Humvee and the Huey. The Huey does have an M60 on the side, so you can have an M60 with an extra M60 technically. <laughs> not that you'd probably want to use the Huey in frontline combat unless you absolutely knew for sure that there wasn't any AA around. Better option though, the 50 cal. The 50 cal is fantastic in Warno, 1,400 meter range with the 30% accuracy. This thing can pin very quickly and do a lot of damage. And there's the mag, which is the British option for machine guns, but back to 1,200 meter range for that. And we have the Polizei Reserve for the Germans. These are res reservists, so they take more suppression in combat. Technically this is an unsteady trait, so this is removed by your military police if you have them nearby. And they also have the security trait. Security trait increases their optics and identification levels to good when not moving, similar to recon units, although they remain an infantry squad. So they go up from normal optics to good optics when they are stationary, that's basically what that means. Then there is the L6 Wombat, this is an AT option, <laughs> good old recoilless rifle with 15 
penetration at 1,400 meter range. Then you have the Milan, which has 17 penetration at 2,450 meter range, but we'll need to keep its track. And we have the British Rifle Leader, which is a six-man squad with five L85s, an L7A2, and an M72 Law for 125 points. We have the standard rifle squad that does come with the Law 80. The Law 80 is a very good AT weapon, so definitely worth some uh, looking at. And then you have the RAF rifles, which are the reservist troops of the British here, and they also have the security trait. So if you use these with a military police unit, you can actually get quite a lot of value here because you remove that reservist trait, basically, and you have quite a lot of guns on target for close range engagements versus infantry. But bear in mind, you don't have AT. Then there is the Rover Wombat Jeep available, 15 AP again, uh, with the 1,400 meter range, but on a Jeep instead of as an infantry squad. Then we have the British Assault Pioneer Leader. These are shock troops, so six L2A3 submachine guns. Pretty nice squad, honestly, for as a leader. And then we have the Terriers Pioneer, which are a shock once again with eight L1A1s and the L4A4 with satchel charges. So pretty decent close range infantry squad because the shock trait does inflict more suppression when fighting at close combat ranges. And generally you'll be running to get in range of the satchel. And we have the Grenadier Voltages for the French. These are the leaders here. Uh, in my opinion, like having a shock leader is probably better because you're probably going to keep it on return fire for the most part and only when units are close are you going to really open up on them. So shock trait is fantastic for these leaders, whereas just a standard leader there, not as great. But the Grenadier Voltages are actually really nice, these squads themselves, because of the LRAC F1. They do have like the standard for mass uh, AA and F1. But the LRAC with its 850 meter range and 50% accuracy is really good for taking out APCs. And we have the Sapper Leader, which comes with that nice shock trait. A little bit more expensive because it has more men, so 8 strength instead of 6 strength. And yeah, with the shock trait there, that's actually not a bad combination. We also have the Sappers with the flamethrowers, which also have shock trait. But they use submachine guns, the Mat 49 and the AANF1 with the flamer there, which is really good. And then we have the light rifle leader, which is the American infantry leader. They have five M16s, the M249 and the M72 Law. The M72 Law, like the penetration sucks, but the rate of fire is really good. They also come with the M113A3 and the M113A3 Dragon, uh, which potentially have good application against infantry when you're engaging in like urban environments and the enemy doesn't really have any reliable way to kill them. And then we have the Berlin Light Rifles which are a 10-man infantry squad that come with the M67 Recoilless with the 1400 meter range. So an interesting squad to be sure but don't have any traits that make them any better. And then there we have the Milan 2. The Milan 2 being a very, very strong AT unit with the 24 penetration. You can also bring them in with the VAB and the VAB Milan, which comes with its own Milan 1 with the 17 penetration and 2,450 meter range. And that's the infantry tab. Then we have the artillery tab. 81 mm mortars are available for the British. We also have French 120 millimeter mortars. There is the VAB that carries an 82mm mortar. We have the M28, uh, M125 mortar, sorry, which has 81mm mortars inside, and the M0, M106A2 mortar, which has the 107mm inside. Then there's the option of the M198 155mm artillery, which does come with the nice 4.19 damage. But better than that, we have the M109A2s, which are much more reliable because they are armoured vehicles and they are very mobile. So you can fire off a volley with these and then you can move straight afterwards or salvo. So my recommendations here would be focusing on the M109s and maybe bring in some mobile mortars of some sort. 
In the tank tab, we have the Raden, the FV432 Raden. This comes with the 30mm Raden cannon. It has limited armor, but decent infantry support potentially. Then there's the P4 Milan, which comes with the Milan 2. Good for just keeping hidden in tree lines uh, in order to snipe enemy tanks at range. We also have the Rover Milan, which is basically the same thing. It just whether or not you want to have a British vehicle or a French vehicle. Technically, the French vehicle is better because it has a little bit more off-road speed. And we have the AMX 1390. This has an autoloader, so it doesn't suffer from lower rate of fire when it's suppressed, which is pretty useful in certain situations, but the yeah, limited penetration so you're only really going to be taking out enemy light armored units or side shotting enemy tanks i feel like they're quite expensive for the uh, power that they have but the amx 30 b is a solid option you can get it as a command variant you can also get the standard variant which is 85 points really really nice infantry support tank because it not only has its main gun it has a 20 millimeter auto cannon as well as its machine gun so a nice solid option to support your infantry and if anything gets in line of sight that's armor 15 penetration at closer ranges is actually pretty good uh, Humvee Toe 2 of course a very very solid option with the good stealth and then you have the M901A3 the ITV which is not as good because it has mediocre stealth it does come with more Toe 2 missiles though then there's the M728 CEV really good infantry support tank for taking out enemy infantry because of its 3.2 HE on its main gun as well as its double machine guns but will suffer against enemy uh, tanks and so on and we have the chieftain mark 10 both the command variant and the standard variant and uh, this has a 120 millimeter gun with 19 penetration at 2275 meter range so a very decent gun 15 front armor, 6 side armor. And then we have the M1 IP Abrams, which is just a little bit better in terms of armor, but not as good in the gun. So the Chieftain Mark 10 going to be punching quite nicely above its weight with its gun, whereas the M1 IP more survivable with that extra 17 front armor, extra side armor there, as you see. So... Yeah, these, both of them are decent options. Then we have the recon tab. There's the Ferret Mark II, which comes with the uh, machine gun there. We've got the Fox. Uh, if you're wondering what these mean, it just has recon trait, which basically allows it to deploy further forwards, which you can see down here. So 2,473 meters of advanced deployment from your initial deployment zone. And then also in this case, the Fox has the amphibious traits. Yep, amphibious vehicles are now in the game, so you can go across water. Uh, then we have the scouts. The scouts are actually pretty nice here because they can come in with the M113A3A cav, which does come with the M40A1 recoilless with 17 penetration at 1,400 meter range. It's better than the standard M67 that the infantry get. Uh, so yeah, pretty solid recon vehicle to accompany a pretty standard recon squad of four men you can also bring them in with a recon humvee if you want or the huey and we have detachment a these guys are recon unit special forces which basically take less suppression in combat move faster and deal more damage they can also get technically veterancy four but I'm not sure if that's necessarily represented in game yet. And they also, in this case, have the shock trait to inflict more suppression when fighting at close ranges. So although they are only six men with MP5s, they are going to pack a punch against enemy infantry due to their high veterancy, due to the special forces trait, due to the shock trait. And they have satchel charges to make that even better at super close ranges. And they have an 84, which is relatively reliable at taking out light and medium armor. And we have the BGS squads. These are a nine-man squad, but they are unfortunately reservists, so they are unsteady. But technically, you're probably not going to want to have them in like 
combat most of the time anyway recon you want to keep on return fire generally so you can just get you the information you need and then if an enemy squad comes across these it's nine mp5s which is actually a decent amount of damage at close range you can bring them in in this really interesting unit the sonderwagen uh, which is an, an interesting recon vehicle with a plow on it and then a hk21 machine gun on top and we have the AML-60. This has an HE gun. Uh, it is amphibious. Uh, good infantry fire support. And super fast. So that's the benefits of that. But lacks a little bit in optics overall. But otherwise, nice infantry fire support. Then we have the scouts. These can come in with the gazelle if you want to get them further forwards. Or put them in an interesting location. Uh, but otherwise... Just a standard four-man squad with a M72, which is not too great. Then we have the Sonderwagen Aufklader, which is just a standard unarmed version of the Sonderwagen. Has better optics, as you can see here. So very good optics with that sort of like camera thing on the top of it, which is pretty cool. And we have the Alouette Recon Helicopter, pretty standard. And the Eclader, which are... A four strength recon squad with the LRAC, which is actually a pretty decent AT weapon, so something to consider. In the A tab, we have the 20mm AA, the 53T2. There's also the TRM 2000 with the 53T2 on the back. Then there's the Javelin squads, which have pretty good accuracy these days, but they need to hold a track because they are guided. But they need to basically hold line of sight, I should say, uh, in order to hit their target. Whereas a Stinger, it's fire and forget. So it has 50% accuracy, but it's fire and forget. Whereas the Javelin, extra accuracy, but you have to keep line of sight. And we have the Mistral, 60% accurate fire and forget, which is very, very nice. And the PVADs, which is absolutely trash at the moment. Unfortunately, um, these spags have kind of not done too well in this patch and uh, aren't very effective at the moment and then we have the javelin lml which has 65 percent accuracy with 4 he but again it needs to hold line of sight in order to use that accuracy then we have the helicopter tab pretty simple gazelle ah1 with rockets and the lynx ah7 hell arm which comes with the ito nice helicopter for like holding at the back of your lines and just kind of like sniping stuff as it pushes forwards you don't really want to be aggressive with this thing because it only has six health in the air tab things are pretty cool here i mean we have the standard harriers that we've seen before so the harrier gr3 aa variant with the aim 9 l's good for taking down enemy helicopters potentially enemy aircraft but it is very slow there's the GR3 with the rockets, the 68mm rockets. We have the GR3 with the two, 600, oh, sorry, 264 kilogram cluster bombs and the GR3 with the two 450 kilogram bombs, which is actually not a terrible payload. We also now finally have the F117A Nighthawk. It's here. Unfortunately, not too great at the moment. No ECM and no stealth trait or anything like that so it is very vulnerable since it is quite slow but its bombs are decent the gbu 27 does do decent amount of damage and one thing that's actually quite nice about this is it fires off one bomb at a time so you can get two runs in every time if there's no enemy aa or aircraft and considering if you do bring this in when there are enemy aircraft and aa it's going to die so if you get one strike off, you can probably get off a second. <laughs> That's the way I see it. Um, at the moment, 130 points, so nice and cheap. Uh, I would say it's worth bringing at the moment. Uh, and I think at some point it's going to get buffed. It's going to get the stealth trait or it's just going to get crazy ECM. One of the two. And we have the Mirage 4. Look at this beast. This thing has two anti-radar missiles with the 47% accuracy, 28 penetration. This is just going to blast enemy radar AA which is nice and it also comes with six 400 kilogram bombs and then we have the Mirage 4 with 16 400 kilogram bombs beware this bombing pattern is very long 
So do not bring it in from your base and do a straight line towards the enemy. You want to go off to the left and pitch into the right and do it like across the enemy rather than like straight at the enemy because otherwise you're going to end up friendly firing. I learned this the hard way. <laughs> it's a lot of bombs. It's a lot of bombs. 40% ECM on both of these Mirage 4s is very, very nice. And that is your lot for the units. So let's put together a quick deck. Uh, we will want all of the supply that we have access to. Unfortunately, you don't get too much supply. And I'm also going to throw in the P4 PC, which is going to be like my back capping command. Then we have infantry. I am going to throw in the Prevoteer because they are a 10 point infantry squad, which have the military police trait. Now the military police trait doesn't just affect units that are unsteady. It also affects every other unit around it so the suppression regeneration bonus is really really nice and i think you know supplementing these with your other infantry on the front line is going to be a, a way to go so going to be adding at least one card of military police definitely going to be bringing in rifles rifles are just super good as at because 850 meter range 20 penetration super nice the other thing that you definitely want is them land two so we'll bring in one of those uh, we are going to want the sappers with the flamethrowers because they have shock trait and a flamethrower which is really really nice also the terriers with the pioneers uh, these are uh, like satchel charge infantry that are shock infantry other than that i'm going to bring in a card of raf rifles to accompany the privilege and then i'll probably want some a to gem infantry and 50 cows so we'll bring in some 50 cows for sure and then I'm thinking a card of engineers with dragons so that we can harass things at range. Like the dra normal dragon isn't that good, but having 1,575 meter range on a infantry squad with 10 men is not too bad. So we'll leave that tab for now. Uh, we're definitely going to bring in both cards of the M109A2s. And I will bring in a card of mobile mortars. In the tank tab, we want both the Chieftain Mark 10s and the Chief uh, and the M1 IP Abrams. I think we probably also want to utilize both of the leaders just so that we have the maximum armor available. AMX 30Bs, super good. And I'm also going to sneak in the Toe 2 because it has two one 2625 meter range over the 2450 meter range of the Milan 2. Uh, it also has more accuracy, so pretty nice to have. In the recon tab, definitely want the Fox. It's a solid recon vehicle. We're going to bring in Detachment A, as they are great units for starting out the game. Other than that, we have the option of the Scouts or the Akladu. I think we'll go for the Scouts with the M113 A cab. I think this is just a very valuable recon vehicle. In the AA tab, we're just going to focus on man pads entirely because the 20 mil AA is trash and so are the P pads. So we just want to go javelins, stingers, mistrals, and javelin LMLs. In the heli tab, we'll want to bring in the hell arm. It is two points, so maybe we don't want to bring it in. And then in the air tab, we definitely want to bring in the seed. We want to bring in the Mirage 4. I am going to bring in the Harry GR3 as AA. And we'll bring in a Nighthawk, which leaves us with three points that I think I will either put into the infantry tab or we could put into the tank tab. Mess around with the AMX 1390s, although they aren't particularly great because they're a little bit overpriced in my opinion. The other option would be to bring in some extra recon that I could use early on. Like These would be good to deploy at the start of the game because they do have a decent launcher so that is tempting the other thing is just like maybe more rifles to make use of the uh, law 80 or even we could bring in like the wombat for example to provide recoilless rifle support i think the best option is probably Let's see. We'll go for an extra infantry squad. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to bring in two upvetted rifles there. I think that's what we'll do. 
Cool. So let's name that Berlin Command. I think I already have a deck, so I will just name it Berlin Command 1 so I don't get confused. So we can have a look at its overview. And there you have it. And that's what we just built. I think it's a little bit different from what I had before, from when I was trying it. Uh, but I think this is more well-rounded and utilizes a lot of the better units. So there you have it, Berlin Command. A pretty cool deck, honestly. I really like the Nighthawk being in this. The Nighthawk is such a cool aircraft. The Mirage 4, the big old bomber. It's super good. Like it's Well, it's fun to use. I wouldn't say it's super good. It's definitely fun to use. Um, you've got Chieftains, which is nice. I like Chieftains. There's plenty of like British uh, units in here. Uh, that is fun. Uh, their AA, it sucks. Honestly, this is probably the thing that's going to affect you the most. You will definitely be harassed a lot by aircraft and also enemy helicopters, so do watch out for that. But that's my overview of the Berlin Command. Uh, let me know what you think of the division in the comments. But that is it for now. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.